In this video, I'll first show some building tips, then I'll walk you through how to make the robot, and at the end, I'll show you how to troubleshoot some common issues. Okay, let's start with a few tips. If you ever have trouble fitting any two pieces together, you can rub some candle wax on the outside edges of the piece being inserted and or on the inside edges of the other piece. This helps because when the wood pieces are being cut by the laser, the glue that holds the plywood together melts and gets on the outside edges of the wood. That glue is kind of tacky and it can make it difficult for the pieces to stick together. The wax covers that layer of glue so it's not quite so sticky and that makes it easier to fit the pieces together. However, that layer of glue on the outside edges of the wood is also what helps these pieces stay together. So only use the candle wax when necessary. Okay, tip number two. If there are two pieces that are too loose and they're falling apart, you can get a very small piece of masking tape, pinch it around the outside of the connector, and then fit it back into where it needs to go. Alternatively, if your robot is completely done and you fine-tuned it and it's working great except something keeps falling out, you can just apply a little bit of super glue to the outside of the fitting. Okay, tip number three. If you need to take something apart by hand, the easiest way to do this is to firmly pinch it and as you pull, wiggle the piece from side to side. However, there's an easier way to separate two pieces. All you need is a blunt, non-sharp butter knife from your kitchen drawer or a small flathead screwdriver. Either way, to remove two pieces more easily than by hand, wedge the tool between two of the parts and then just give it a twist. Repeat on the other side until the part comes loose. You can also use this technique to loosen up a connection that's too tight. Tip number four. If you want to paint the robot, I recommend doing that before assembling it. If you do choose to paint your robot, make sure not to get any paint inside any of the connection points or on the outside of any of the connectors. The first step is to wire up the battery holder to the motor. Make sure to turn the battery holder off so you don't accidentally create a short circuit by crossing the wires. Open up the battery holder and install the batteries so the flat side is touching the spring. The motors have two metal tabs on them that have holes and we're going to use those to connect the battery holder. Take one of the wires, put it through the hole on either of the tabs, fold the wire, and then twist it as many times as you can. When you're twisting the wires, avoid pinching and twisting the metal tab on the motor. If you do that, it might break off. Repeat with the other wire through the hole, fold it in half, and then twist it as many times as you can. In the end, it should look something like this. Give it a light tug and make sure that the connections are strong. It doesn't matter where the red and black wires are connected. Turn it on and make sure that it works. The next step is to put the electronics inside this piece. The motor goes here. Now, before going any further, stop and check to make sure that the motor is turning in the right direction. So to help us understand which way is the correct way, I'm going to temporarily add this gear, and I'm going to temporarily attach the head, which goes next to this cross-shaped hole. Now turn on the motor, and notice which way it's turning. You can imagine that if this was a wheel, it would be driving the robot in this direction. For the Dinobot, the motor needs to be spinning in the other direction. In other words, we want it so that if this were like a wheel, we want the robot to be driving backwards. I know that's a little counterintuitive, but that's the way it is because of the gears that we're going to add later. So to fix this, just turn off the motor, then just flip the motor around like this. Put this back on for a second. Now the motor is spinning in the correct direction. Like I said, we want this so that if this were like a wheel, we want it so that the robot is driving in this direction, backwards. Now that the motor is in the correct position, take off the gear and I'm gonna remove the head as well so it doesn't get in the way of other things. Next, put the battery pack under the motor. Make sure that the on and off switch is right next to this cross-shaped hole. 
Now this piece is going to fit into this slot right here. The easiest way to do this is to first get it in position, then support the battery pack with your fingertips and put your thumbs on top of the piece and squeeze your hands together. One little thing to look out for, this piece can get stuck in the screw hole of the battery holder, so just watch out for that as you're pushing it down. Repeat with the smaller piece that goes over this slot next to the motor. Get it in position, then squeeze it together. Double check one more time, and make sure that the motor is turning in the correct direction. Okay, this part is done. Now we're gonna work on the gears. Before assembling, it's critical to rub wax between all the teeth on every gear. If you skip this step, then the robot won't work. But fortunately, there's a pretty quick way to do this. Just hold the gear in one hand, place the candle between two of the teeth, and rotate it back and forth one time. It's a little tedious, but this technique makes it go pretty quick. All the gears have now been coated in wax, and we're ready to move on. The next step is to connect the gears to this piece. To do that, we're gonna make connectors out of these pieces, and note that there are basically two types. There are connectors that have rounded tops, and connectors that look like they have little blocks stuck to the side. There's also a few of these. For attaching the gears, make sure to use these ones that have the rounded tops. To assemble the connector, make sure to get one of each kind, then interlock them a little bit, like this. Now the easiest way to finish the connector is to stand it up on your work surface and then press down with your thumbs. These connectors have really thin pieces so they can break, but don't worry, you've been supplied with a few extra. These connectors are designed to fit very tightly into this piece. These are what will hold the gears in place and it's important that the gears don't loosen up over time. So because that connection is going to be extremely tight, you'll need to rub wax on the edges of every connector, like that. Now let's return to this piece. The biggest gears are going to go here and here, and the medium sized gear is going to go here. The easiest way to attach the gear with this connector is to first get the connector in position, then push down with both thumbs. Now we need to push this connector all the way through this piece so that it pokes out the other side. The easiest way to do that is to flip this piece over and set it down flat on your work surface. Put your fingertips as close to the connector as possible, but avoid covering it. Then press down. Make sure that the gear can spin freely. This is a little bit tight, so to loosen it up, just grip the gear and wiggle it from side to side until it can spin more easily. Or just push on the connector a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. Finish attaching the gear by turning it around and fitting one of these round pieces with a cross-shaped hole over the connector. Again, the easiest way to do this is to lay it on the table, get the connector in position, and push down with your thumbs. Repeat with another big gear below the first one and make sure that it can also spin easily. The next gear is this medium-sized one. Before attaching this one, make sure that the cross-shaped connectors on the big gears are facing the same direction, like this. These two connectors need to move together for the leg to work. Now, put the medium-sized gear right here and attach it with another connector. When you're pushing the connector all the way through, remember to put your fingers as close to the connector hole as possible when you're pushing down. If your fingertips are far away when you're pushing down, you run the risk of breaking this piece, like that. Test it out and make sure that all the gears are turning smoothly. The next step is to attach the leg to the gear assembly. For this, you'll need these connectors that have these little block shapes on the sides. Note that each pair of connectors has one that has these two block shapes, and then the other that just has one. Like with the other connectors, first interlock them a little bit, and then finish by standing it up and pressing down with your thumbs. So now this connector has these block pieces that are jutting out on three of the sides, but not on this side. These are going to go into the cross-shaped holes and make sure that the side that does not have one of those block shapes on it is facing toward the center of the gear, like this. Here's a close-up of what that looks like. So if you're curious why this connector has these little block-shaped bits poking off the sides, it's to elevate the leg so that it doesn't bump into any of these connectors. 
Okay, the two connectors have been installed. Now put the leg onto the connectors, like this, making sure that the knee is facing away from this hole. If the leg is turned around the other way, with the knee facing toward the hole, then the dinosaur isn't going to work. Now keep the leg from falling off by putting a circle connector here and here. Before attaching this to the rest of the robot, turn it by hand like this a few times. This helps to spread out the wax on the gear teeth, and it loosens up the components a little bit so that they move smoother. If the leg isn't moving, make sure that no connection is being pressed on too tightly. For example, if this piece is pressed on too tight, then it's not going to rotate very well. You can loosen that up by hand by gripping the piece and pulling and wiggling it, or easier is to use something like a dull knife to wedge it under that piece and give it a little wiggle. Now it's moving a lot smoother than before. The last step for the leg assembly is to attach the feet. These fit into the bottom of the leg, just like this. Make sure that these pieces are pushed together all the way by setting the leg down on your work surface and then pressing down on the top of the foot with both hands. Also make sure that the long part of the foot is pointing toward the back side of the leg assembly. Repeat one more time. This leg is done. Now we're going to put these two pieces together. First, fit this tab into this slot, just like that. Now, with the hole positioned over the motor shaft, push these two pieces together. Next, put the smallest gear onto the motor shaft. Turn it on and see if it's working. If it's not turning or if it's moving really sluggishly, don't worry, at the end of this video, I'll walk you through some of the most common troubleshooting issues. Before repeating on the other side, there are two really important things that you need to know. Make sure that the second set of legs is a mirror of the first one. In other words, don't copy it like this one. If you create a copy where the knees are pointing in the same direction, then when you go to attach it onto the robot, you'll notice that you need to turn it around like this for the hole to line up with the motor. You'll also notice that by doing that, now the leg is on the wrong side of the gear assembly. So instead, when you're creating the second leg, make sure that it's a mirror image of the first one, with the knees pointing in opposite directions from the motor hole. Now you'll see that when the leg is installed, you'll see that the hole goes over the motor shaft and the leg is on the outside of the gears. The second important thing to note is that the legs need to be in opposite positions before installing the second motor gear. In other words, if the first leg is in the highest position, like this, then the second leg needs to be in the lowest position, like this. Having the legs in opposite positions of each other is what will allow the robot to take steps and walk forward. So with one leg in the highest position and the other leg in the lowest position, the second motor gear can be added. Okay, a quick recap of the steps. Assemble the round top connectors. Connect the large gears here and here. Make sure that the cross-shaped connectors on the big gears are facing the same direction, like this. Then the medium-sized gear here. Put these round pieces on the back to make sure the gears don't fall out. Then assemble these connectors with the block-shaped pieces on the sides. Fit those into the gears. Put the leg onto those, making sure that the knee is pointing away from the hole where the motor will go and cap that off with two more of these round pieces. Then attach the feet. Now fit this tab into this slot, just like that. Now with the hole positioned over the motor shaft, push these two pieces together. Next, put the smallest gear onto the motor shaft. Okay, turn it on. And you can see that both legs are moving in opposition to each other. Lastly, this piece is going to get attached to the underside of the robot to help hold the battery pack. So flip it upside down. For this step, I've removed one of the legs so that you can more easily see what's happening, but you don't have to do that. This piece fits into these slots here and here. Get it in position, then with your fingers on top of the robot and your thumbs on the piece, squeeze to press it all together. You should be able to get your thumbs in there even if both legs are attached. Now you can add the head and the tail. 
To attach the arms, you're gonna fit these two small staple shape pieces together that don't have rounded tops or block shape pieces on the sides. Like before, interlock these a little bit and push them together. This connector goes through the remaining cross-shaped hole right here. Push it through so that it's poking out on both sides. Then just attach the arms in whatever position you want. The last step is to give your T-Rex something to help it cope with its stubby little arms and give him a snack. Okay, and you're done. Before getting into troubleshooting, there's one tip about this particular robot. When you're not using it, manually rotate the legs so that the feet are level with each other like this. That way when you set it down, the weight is going to be distributed evenly across both legs. If you just rest it on one leg, it's going to lean slightly toward the raised side and that can put strain on those parts over time. If there's a piece that breaks and there are no extras, you can just use a little bit of super glue to put it back together. If you turn on your robot and it's not working, that means that one or more of the fittings are pressed together too tightly. So the first step is to find out where it's too tight. And the easiest way to do this is to wiggle each piece and see what isn't moving. So if I wiggle this gear, you can see that this gear, this gear, and this gear are all moving a little bit, which means that none of those are the problem. If I try and move the leg, you can see that it's moving down here, but it's not wiggling around this joint at all. So this might be the problem. The easiest way to loosen this up is to get something like a butter knife and carefully wedge it under that connector and give it a wiggle. Now you can see that the leg is wiggling around that connector. So let's try it out again. Mm, it's working better, but it's still sluggish. So that means that there's another connector that's too tight. If that's the case, go to the other side and wiggle each connection one at a time to find the one that isn't moving at all and then loosen it up slightly. If you've checked all the connections and all of them seem just loose enough, then it may be the motor gear that's been pressed on too tight. If the robot starts to walk and then it stops all of a sudden, that means that the gears have not been waxed enough. You can find the problem gear by wiggling each one and finding where it feels tight and stuck. You can wax all the gears again without taking it apart by manually rotating the motor gear. Another possible issue is that there may be a little tiny scrap of wood that's stuck in between the gear teeth that's left over from when it was removed from this. So you can just break off that scrap. If your robot is taking uneven steps like this, then that means that the legs are not in opposite positions of each other. So to fix that, take off one of the motor gears. It doesn't matter which one. Rotate the corresponding leg to the lowest position and rotate the other leg to the highest position. Then, making sure this is in the lowest position, put the motor gear back on. If you feel that you need to get behind the leg assembly to troubleshoot something, this is really easy to do. Just remove the motor gear, remove this piece, and then just wiggle and pull until it comes away. Now you can look behind here, loosen these connectors, wax the gears, whatever you need to do. Then when you're finished, the whole leg assembly snaps easily back into place. Just make sure that the legs are in opposite positions of each other before putting the motor gear back on. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and enjoy your new Dinobot.